Hey guys, my name is Grace, and today I'm going to be doing a fall DIY video. So if you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. I'd like to give a shout out to Hot Gluey Louie because they commented hashtag crafting with Grace on my last video. And with all of that being said, let's get into the video. So for this first DIY, I'm going to be painting a pumpkin, and because it was this brown color at first, I threw a coat of white over the entire pumpkin so I could start with a fresh, clean coat of paint, and it wouldn't take a million coats to get a nice, solid color. I was pretty stuck on ideas for this pumpkin. I really didn't know what to paint it as, but I went onto the internet and I found an idea which was to make it into a piece of candy corn. So this wasn't my idea, I found it on the internet, I just wanted to let you guys know that. So after my base coat, at the bottom of the pumpkin, I painted a nice layer of pastel orange, and I think I just did one coat for now. Next, I did a coat of pastel yellow above the orange, and then above that was the white, and that's pretty much it. I just kept on building up the colors, and you can stop at that point but I decided to take it the extra step and blend the colors. But instead of just blending them, I used a paper towel to uh, press on the blended spots to kind of make a texture. And I think this turned out really cool. I didn't add a coat of Mod Podge because I didn't feel like the paint was going anywhere. It didn't seem to be chipping off. Plus it would take like a whole bottle of Mod Podge to cover the entire um, pumpkin. So I just left the Mod Podge off and I think it looks really cool. For this next DIY, I'm going to be painting a spooky sign, and I actually had this from last year, and for some reason I painted a rainbow on it, but it just didn't seem appropriate for Halloween, so I decided to change it up a little bit. If you want to try this DIY out for yourself, I think this sign came from a craft store like Joy and Fabrics or Hobby Lobby, so I will check there first if you want to try this out yourself. Because I started to paint this sign last year, I needed to put a base coat of white on it so that all of the color from last year would be covered up and I could start fresh. So on the front, I just threw on two coats of white paint. So I decided to paint the whole sign orange, but instead of just doing a solid coat of orange, I decided to do a gradient. So in Spooky, for the S and P, I chose a dark orange. For the two O's, I lightened that color, and for the K and Y, I lightened it even further, and then I did a couple of coats and blended the colors between the letters. Next, I threw a base coat on the edges and the back of the sign, which probably should have been done first with the um, base coat for the front, because the whole front of the sign got messed up with white paint and I had to go back over it, but it's okay, so I did about one or two coats on the back of white and just one coat around the edges and on the insides and it is a little tedious to get on the insides of the letters but it makes for a really nice finish so if you're trying this out for yourself i would definitely recommend getting all of the edges after the base coats were done i carried the orange over to the edges and the back and made sure the whole sign was covered in orange and was blended really nicely and that all of the colors were very opaque. Lastly, you'll want to protect your paint job, so I chose a matte mod podge finish, and I applied it over the front, back, and edges of the sign. I didn't do all of the edges because some of them were hard to get to, and it would also take a lot of mod podge and a lot of time, so I just did the front, back, and some of the edges, and I think this turned out really cool. I love the orange gradient, and it looks a lot more Halloween-ish than it did before. So yeah, I think this turned out really cool. This last DIY is a bit more complicated and you might not have all of the supplies needed to complete it, but I still think it turned out pretty cool so I thought I'd put it in here anyways. So for this DIY, I'm actually going to be making a fall themed pillow, and if you see another pair of hands in this video, that is my grandma because she was helping me out a lot when I was making this pillow. I 
I started off with some cream colored fabric and I'm going to be using a roller to cut all of the fabric which kind of looks like a pizza cutter and also a cutting board so that I don't damage any other surface. So if you're trying this at home, you want to make sure that you have a cutting board. I went ahead and used the roller against another kind of cutting board mat to make sure that the edges were nice and straight. I think the original size that I was going to make this was 12 by 8, but I think I ended up making it an 11 by 7. So you can really make this pillow any size that you want. I went with a rectangle. So I'm pretty sure the measurements were 11 by 7 if you want to follow my measurements exactly. Then you want to use an iron and press out all of the wrinkles in the fabric so that your pillow is nice and flat. You also want to cut out two sheets of this 11 by 7 cream fabric because there's going to be two sides of your pillow. Next, I picked out this really pretty fall themed pattern with leaves on it, and of course you can choose whatever pattern you like, but this one was my favorite. And then you want to cut this out to the same size as your cream color fabric, and if you want the pattern on both sides of your pillow, you want to cut out two pieces of this fabric, but I only wanted mine on one, so I only cut out one piece. Next, I folded in all of the sides of the fall theme pattern because I wanted a little rectangle of the fall theme pattern inside a big rectangle of the cream colored pattern, if that makes any sense. Then to make the lines more definite, you want to iron them out so they crease and stay put. And you also want to pin the fall theme pattern to one side of the cream colored fabric so that they stay together until you sew them. Next, you want to take a sewing machine to sew the fall theme pattern to the cream colored fabric permanently. Now you're going to want to start sewing the two pieces together. So the piece that has the pattern is going to go down so you won't see the pattern at all. And then you're just going to start sewing the two pieces together, but you want to make sure that you leave an opening that's big enough for your hand so later on we can stuff the pillow. After that, you're going to want to flip the pillow inside out, and then you want to take an iron and make sure all of the edges and corners are nice and crisp and straight. Next, you're going to take some stuffing and stuff the pillow in that little opening that you left. So just stuff it as full as you can and make sure to get all of the stuffing into the corners. Don't let the corners lie flat. It is a little bit tricky but you just want to really work that stuffing in there. For the last part of this DIY, you're going to want to hand stitch the little opening that you left closed. So you're just going to take a needle and some thread and stitch it closed and your pillow is done. Mine turned out really cool. I love the fall theme pattern on the front. And yeah, I just think this is a really awesome DIY. I'm really happy with how all of these DIYs turned out, and I hope you guys like them too. And be sure to comment down below if you tried one out for yourself. I know it's been a while since I posted last, I've just been really busy, so I'm sorry for that. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye!